So we'll kick off. Martin will be back in a minute. Okay, we're up to options. Yep. So we finished up um, before morning tea um, with the rating example, and that's based on 12.4. So the next section um, is to look at options that we've identified for consideration to reduce that, because I guess 12.4% is a figure that's um, higher than any of us would prefer. So um, what we've got here is a couple of options um, for consideration. Firstly, um, a question mark around three waters depreciation. So you might recall back in the earlier slide um, when I gave the breakdown of the de forecast depreciation for next year, there's an estimated uplift of 441,000 flowing from this year's capex on three waters assets. And so there's a question there, um, basically given the impending uh, transfers, the reforms that are going on, is it uh, necessary to fully fund that through current rate payers or could we potentially leave that unfunded, which would have a reduction of, you know, effective reducing rates, required rates by 441,000 or 0.5%. I'll probably just move on. Perhaps I'll cover the second option as well um, and then we can have a discussion around it. So the second option um, is around better off funding um, and the this, this proposal is to consider funding currently within our better off package. We have three point the, the overall package five point two million, three point one eight five million of that was capex by nature allocated to capex projects. And I just want to be clear at the outset: we're not suggesting stopping the projects. What we're um, what we're wondering is whether we can fund these in a different way. And I, what we would be proposing is funding, though, rather than using better off funding to fund those CAPEX items, we use our own baseline CAPEX projects, uh, CAPEX funding allocations, um, and instead reallocate that money towards operating initiatives that are already in the plan. And the, re the reason we're suggesting that is that that would have a more immediate impact on rates. So as per the discussion earlier, when we, when we fund, the, the, the rates impact from CapEx is delayed. You, you build the asset um, and, and the, the, the rates impact comes through in the form of interest on the, on, the, on the CapEx itself, say 5%, and then the depreciation, which will depend on the asset you're building and the life. But a 30-year asset, for example, would, would have you know, 3 or 4% depreciation. So you're, you're talking about an 8 9% impact, which is rates funded, in years to follow. Um, and so it's a long-term impact that carries on um, for years to come, but it has a relatively low and delayed impact on the rates take. Whereas if you're um, using that money to fund operating initiatives that are already in the plan, um, then that would, that would have 100% impact in that year. And so that's essentially what we're proposing here. We're not suggesting stopping or altering these projects, we're just looking at whether they could be funded in a different way in order to provide some, some rates relief with that money. Liz? Yeah, um, I have some concerns with these options. Firstly, um, how um, certain are we that Three Waters is going to continue as a project? I think there's going to be some announcement about it in the short term. Secondly, my view is that uh, these proposed options are very short term in nature. And what happens next year? Because Filbury Road can't plug the, the hole in the dike this year uh, by uh, taking, taking these steps. But next year we've got the same problem back again because we've still got that shortfall unless we address the underlying issue of our cost structure. Um, so, yeah, and, and the third thing is, in re regards to the better off funding, my understanding was that uh, it could not be used for operating expenditure, so how would you, would that, would you need to um, uh, go back to government and get that sort of reapproved? you know, or is it even possible to switch it from CAPEX to OPEX? Yeah. <clears throat> so I suppose, um, just to step there, there's uncertainty around the reforms for sure. This part of it, however, has been 
confirmed. So this money is um, ha has been appropriated by government, and I, I think if they even if they stop the reforms, this first tranche of better off is um, is confirmed. So but is it only for capex? Or not no, for no, it's available. It? You can. So it's available for any type of expenditure. They have criteria that have to be met, but they're quite broad around. Uh, you know, community well-being, housing, yeah, yeah. very broad criteria. And um, yes, it would require, so if we chose to go down this path, we'd have to put a revised proposal through to DIA. So, so they there would be an approval process there. Right. Um, in terms of the unfunded depreciation, I mean, that's assuming that the, you know, the three quarters thing is going to go ahead, isn't it, in terms of the transfer of assets and what have you. So yeah, that's, that's true if we, going back to the first option, mm, if we yeah. chose to short fund that depreciation and it, it did not transfer, the yeah. reforms didn't go, then you're right, we would have a, a, a residual hole that we would have to deal with. Yeah. Yep. And what about the other issue of, you know, what happens next year if we're just so, plugging the gap? Yeah, and so I agree with you on that as well, that this, if we were going to do this, we, we would want to identify finite projects that have an end date. Um, because, as you say, you don't want to fund permanent costs with short-term right. revenue. Yeah. And so, you know, we've—I think I yeah, put an example. Takatai Kapiti is a good example. It's a—it's mm. a—it's a finite project. Um, we could—we could choose to use this money for that, and and the project will stop um, at a point in time. So, so I, I definitely agree with your point. We would, and if you wanted to pursue this, I'd suggest we would have to go back and do um, some further analysis to identify what proposals, what what initiatives we would actually apply it to. That's right, because you you have to address that underlying issue. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to be using short term stop gaps unless we have addressed that yep. longer term issue. Thank you, Martin. <coughs> um, look, I hear what um, Liz is saying, uh, and she's she's dead right. But after saying that, uh, I certainly endorse this approach. Um, I I don't think it was very well understood by the table when um, the initial. Um, funding was allocated. This is something that council officers put across to council at the time, and I don't think it was really very well picked up on as an option with regards to how that money could be spent and how it impacts on that OPEX and CAPEX. I do hear what you're saying, Liz, regards to it's a short-term fix, but part of my issue has always been over is, is there's going to be substantial change with regards to local government over the next couple of years regardless. And we have no idea what it looks like, and we've been told to keep things as business as usual is a very is there's a high high chance it won't be business as usual, um, and we'll have to deal with what that looks like on the other side. And it's just for me, it's in that shorter term, just trying to get to that other side at the moment, with minimal impact on our ratepayers, um, because how we um, how that cake is then going to look and how it's to be up, um, it's going to potentially look very very different in, in the very near future. Um, mm. Nigel. Yep. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, uh, a couple of points for that um, Liz has already raised, but if um, <coughs> if, we'd, if we take a punt on the three waters, um, and that's forty four hundred and forty one k, and three waters doesn't come to pass, and that four hundred and forty one k then the following year will be four hundred and forty one k catch up plus whatever it's going to be. So presumably we haven't sort of looked at what the out years of that would be. So if, you, if you're taking the punt that three waters is going ahead, presumably you're saying, well, no need for depreciation in that year, but you haven't, so it's not in those other years either, right, in the forecast. So you've just taken, basically with three waters, have you just taken that out of the picture completely in terms of depreciation? Uh, um. I think the point you're making is is that if it, if the reforms don't go ahead, yes, this will be a problem we'll have to face yeah. in that subsequent year. So 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 yeah, that's right. That's right. Where our, our base assumption, I suppose, as we're currently directed, is the reforms will go ahead and it will um, that revenue hole will move with our three waters assets across to the new entities. Right, and. Um, <clears throat> My understanding is with the better off funding that their KCDC got 21 point whatever it is and so there's about another 15 or so to come. Now is that is that factored in? No, it's, at the moment no. As I said earlier, this first tranche, which is a quarter of it, 5.2 million, 
is real and confirmed. The, the remaining 15 is, um, it is dependent on the reforms progressing and the new entities raising. This money was appropriated from central government. The the last three quarters is to be raised by as debt by the new entities. So so it's all contingent on those uh, on, on that happening. All right. So you and it, not factored into these numbers. Yeah. And just um, one very quick general note, um, considering that we're talking about ratepayers <coughs> and impact on ratepayers. Um, this will inevitably lead us to a discussion about what needs to be cut in services and already. The, the spectre of user pays I heard was raised. And we do need to be think, mindful of ratepayers and residents. Um, so the, certainly there's impacts on ratepayers directly when you put up rates, um, but there are significant impacts on residents who aren't necessarily first-line ratepayers. And I think we really need to think about that and how because they're in a different market again, they're in a, a rental market, and, and that's a brutal market at the moment. So just when we factor in these things, I think we need to think about that broader economic impact. Thanks, Nigel. Jocelyn? Thank you. Um, so this, it's the previous slide, um, with a bit of, of CapEx funding. So as well as that, there's some OPEX funding um, so you're suggesting that they that that won't yeah so that they are part of that package as well and I think there's some for the Mahara Gallery plus also you've mentioned the the Tahu Tai Kapiti project I can't remember how much has been allocated to that or is that something that you're actually um, yeah, I'm adding uh, I don't think. The, in, the current better off package didn't ha allocate any Takatai Kapiti. I'm simply yeah. using that as an example. Right. If we chose to pursue this, I think that would be a quite a good candidate to substitute. It's already allowed in our budgets, in the annual plan budgets, um, and so uh, you know it would, it would be a good candidate, fixed term, you know, finite term, to use this money for, as an example. Yeah. So what figure would we would we be looking at for that? Uh, I don't have that on me right now, sorry. Um, it's I'd just an example yeah. of the kind of thing we would be able to fund. Mm. I have a couple of questions. Jocelyn, are you? Oh, are you yeah, done? sorry, thank you. Oh, Cathy first. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I support the CapEx being used for, for these projects, but we need to ensure that these projects go ahead either way. Because with rates going up so high, I mean, you know, mine are going to go up dreadfully. But sometimes people don't mind as long as they can see something tangible for, for their rate increases. And I think if we yeah. can, ratepayers can see something for what their rates increases are, it's, um, it's a bit of, bit of relief. But whatever happens, these projects need to go ahead. But I do support the um, going to KCDT Quebec. Thank you. You had a couple of questions. Um, if we go back to the slide around um, the draft as opposed to the actual LTP and the, the closing net debt in there, would this mean that our net debt would go to 285? Um, to the extent, so the right hand column's LTP, the next one across is our current projections, 265. To the extent that we uh, funded those cap if we, if we yeah. decided to continue with all those projects, which is the proposal, fund them out of our baseline capex, it would add to there would be more capex budget required. Yeah. So, so would that have that effect on the net debt too? Yep, yeah, it, it would. It yeah. would add, you know, three point one eight five million. So have we, have we got a slide which itemises those if we go through with the proposed changes? I'm just taking a look. No, I haven't repeated that slide. That might might be useful to have if we decide that this is a good idea. Yeah. Um, so in terms of going back with a revised proposal, it's a bit of a strange time in the process to do that because we've already had that um, provisional approval of the list that we sent through. Um, are any other councils revisiting at this point in the process and have we checked that we can do that? Yep, so I spoke to um, 
our relationship manager at Crown Infrastructure Partners, who are the entity that uh, manages this program for DIA. So I had a conversation with them yesterday about this and um, or about the possibility of exactly that, putting up a variation or a, a substitution, and he said, well, it's, it's not unusual. They're receiving um, okay. proposals from councils, and it'll come back to what we propose and making sure that we meet the criteria around the funding. Um, so I, the new projects that we propose to use it for will need to meet the criteria. But beyond that, he said, no, it's, um, they're happy to receive proposals. Great. That's good to know. So um, I just had a question around the Paikakariki Surf Life Saving too. Um, is that CapEx, even though it's not our property or our project? I was under the impression that if we funded external projects, or then that's actually OPEX, because we can't depreciate it ourselves. Yeah, through you, through you, Madam Chair. Yeah, um, we treat it as CapEx because effectively it's an access right, so it's an asset. Um, so that's why it would be CapEx. So, so it would require an access right, though, which isn't at present in play. Yeah, it's a little bit like the Performing Arts Centre. So um, the the Surf Life Saving Club would have a uh, benefit to you know people within Kapiti. So um, stepping into the accounting world, uh, we can classify it as capex because it's an asset by way of an access right. That doesn't mean you have to go and actually get a legal access right and agreement. But um, we can certainly justify how we treat it as capex because the community can access it. And they do access it because they're members of the surf club for starters. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, are you looking for a steer around this now or further down the track? Uh, look, I think further through, through you, Madam Chair, I think further down the track. Um, I just wanted to point something out. What, what Ian said was, was absolutely correct. Um, if you committed to a, an $88.8 million uh, capital works program and you actually did all that and you reassigned $3.2 million um, it would mean that your capital works program has to go up $3.2 million and because we're not stopping the projects is what Ian has said and your debt would go up but in terms of what we could actually physically deliver um, to be able to deliver $88 million worth of work with, it, with everything that's going on in the country um, is unlikely so you could still um, do the piece of work, but just absorb those projects within the $88 million. So there would be no additional, there would be no increase to the capital works program and there would be no addition to debt. You'd just be pushing some of the some of the projects that were planned would be, could be deferred. So you don't necessarily have to increase debt. Okay, that, that's a good clarification. I think that's really important. Kim, online, and then Jocelyn. Um, yep, yeah, kia ora. Yeah, so effectively we're just kind of doing a defer. So the three questions I have are, you've got a list of projects there. Um, how did, and I'll just say the whole three, how did we select those projects in particular? Because I believe Tranche One was about five million. Um, and so how did we select those projects? Because I, I know when we first saw the Tranche One and the CIA um, Three Waters funding, um, it was there was a bit of an issue around the process it took to get to these projects um, and there were some concerns around that so that's my second question is um, I'm assuming that the consultation process as outlined by DIA and the requirements will be followed if you're going to do a change um, and and what will that process be and kind of lastly is similar to what Councillor Coe said about plugging the hole, um, what's the likelihood that doing this is actually that decrease in rates is going to be realised? Um, and I know I'm asking you to predict a financial forecast, but are there other factors that might negate the benefits um, so that it, at the end of it we're actually left with no decrease in rates and a hole in our budget to fix the following year, like worst case scenario? So what's, what's your... Um, what do you think the likelihood of that will be? And that's all. Mm -hmm. 
Through you, Madam Chair. Thank you for the three questions. Um, the first question was, how did we select the capital the capital projects? I, I guess, I guess to be to put it quite simply, um, sitting at an average rates increase of twelve point four, um, it was no more than knowing that there's there's um, government funding of three point one million dollars that you could actually most of that could be funded from within your existing capital works program. So. As Ian has said, not, you're still going to do those projects, but the funding source just gets reallocated. So you've got an $88, an $88 million capital works program. $3 million could easily fit in there. We know that there's delays. We know that there's cost increases. We know we need to rescope. So what we're saying is, you know, given there's $3.1 million on the table, you could reassign that to OPEX, which is immediate. Um, which is which is a tangible option to reduce your rates increase. You're reducing the rates burden. So it was no more complicated than that. It was just we've got a really significant capital works program that we know we're not going to deliver on, and so we could fund it from existing budgets. And the second question was, um, what is the process? So it would be the same. So as as um, um, Crown Infrastructure Partners has, have, a, have, a, have have indicated. Um, they're actually open to the idea of us reallocating the 3.2 into operating projects, but we would have to actually demonstrate that they meet all the criteria, and we would need to um, work with our iwi partners. And so one of the criteria is that our iwi partners we've engaged, we've consulted, and they've approved the changes. So it'll be um, it'll be that process again. We'll need to work with our iwi partners. We'll need to make sure that we can tick all the boxes. We'll have to identify. Um, operating project initiatives that, that, picks, that pick those boxes. We'll have to do an application form. We'll have to get your approval. We'll have to send it off to Crown Infrastructure uh, Partners. But they have indicated that, you know, they uh, Ian certainly wasn't the first um, council officer to call with that query. So everyone's everyone's looking at the same thing. Um, the third question could was... I just, could I just add to that answer before we move on to the third question? So, yeah. I think what Kim's identified is there was that hole in the first um, con the first decision around this, but I think we got to a place at the end where we had agreement that these projects were a priority for our district and they've now been approved by DIA. So um, I think we've kind of created an expectation now in the community that these projects are going to go forward. It's just a matter of reallocating from CapEx to do that rather than using... Um, available funds which could right now be used for OPEX. It's my understanding from what's been said so far is that we're planning to fund some of our op existing operational budget um, through the three waters rather than adding new operational um, activities. So actually all, those, all that operating budget has already been consulted on, so I would expect that to be a fairly simple approval process to allocate the three waters better off funding to those operational activities. So um, it's not as complicated as adding new projects, which need a, a huge amount of consultation. I'd also bear in mind that we're on a really tight time frame to get this all through and approved so that it can have an impact on rates, so that we can reduce our operational expenditure, which is what we're trying to do. So, um, yeah, I think it would be fairly simple just to approve the the concept of using the three waters better off funding to fund those projects that we've already consulted on and um, reduce rates for this upcoming year. And then look, the third, the third question, I, I, I think I understood what the question was and it, it goes back to Councillor um, Coe's question is, are we just plugging the, I think the question was, are we just plugging the, the gap now um, and creating significant challenges for us in the future and how confident are we that this 3.2 would genuinely reduce our rates. So um, so there's two answers to that. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to pick off the easier one. How confident are we that this would genuinely reduce our rates? Well, for a starter, um, we would need to go through the application process. What, what we know today is that the better off funding, uh, once it's approved, you're entitled to 10% of the uh, project cost up front and then you um, retrospectively claim the money back uh, as the project progresses. So we, we, that's a level of detail that we don't yet know. But if, um, if, um, 
if it's agreed, if we if we pick out, you know, qualifying operational projects for three point one million dollars, and um, it's accepted and approved, and a funding agreement is signed by our chief executive, it's guaranteed. So um, there could be a little lag, but we'll still get that money in, and we would reduce the rates revenue. So we'll be absolutely certain we would not be rating the community for three point one. That's why we set the rate. So um, as long as all the documents are approved and signed, we guarantee that we do not need to, um, we could reduce our rates revenue requirement by $3.2 million. And Ian has said, um, you know, this council is reliant, 75% of its rates, of its revenue is derived by rates. Um, you know, you've got fees and charges, you increase fees and charges too much, uh, no one uses the facilities, you've got a hole. So as part of the um, as part of the uh, development of the long term plan, you have to revisit. You'll be looking at your strategy, uh, what's required to deliver on that strategy. You'll be looking at all the costs. You know, we'll be looking at our financial strategy. So, um, can't really answer that. You know, we know that in the passage of time, things are getting more expensive. Um, we don't have any CCTOs. We don't own any lines companies. We are very reliant on rates. And so, um, you know, going back to the financial strategy, if you want rates, if you want rates to go down, you've got to cut your capital project, which means you're looking at your levels of service. So there's you know big questions and, and big discussions that we have to have in the future. But for now, um, it's about. As the Mayor has said, we've got limited time to produce an annual plan um, and we've said that we have, um, our assumption, our starting assumption is that our levels of service remain the same and we're largely sticking to year three. Uh, year four is part of the new long term plan where you get to look at all of that. I hope I answered the question. Yep, thank you. Jocelyn? Oh, hang on Kim, did you have any further comment before we move on? No, yeah, and I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that I'm asking you to forecast things that you probably have no control over, but I just wanted to get your idea of a sense. So it, in my head, it's a temporary re relief. Um, yeah, and and to, if I'm being honest, this exactly what we're doing now was discussed last year. Um, why aren't we just reducing, reducing using the capex to reduce, um, you know, ongoing? And um, we did raise it last year, but then we went this route. So we're pretty much just going back, revisiting that idea. Yeah, good point, good point. Um, Jocelyn. Yeah, thank you. So um, I'm just picking up on a point that um, Liz made, and I suppose my question relates to um, these items here. So how many of these items are, you know, with this, uh, if this money was um, from the Better Off funding, would be completed with, other potential money that's in the long term plan, you know, maybe some of these projects might be completely covered by this better off funding, some might be topping up what's already in the long term plan. What other projects, um, and, and which of these projects are don't have any money in the long term plan? So, through you, Madam Chair, look, I, I um, certainly Paikakariki Surf Life Saving. The, the long-term plan didn't provide for that one. Um, the better off funding, the broad brush um, purpose of the better off funding was uh, where you had an existing project that you were scaling up yes. or you were bringing forward or it was something completely new. Um, there weren't, there weren't, certainly weren't too many completely new projects that, that are there. So okay. I think the Surf Life Saving Club is probably the only one. Uh, McLean Park Stage yes. 2 has always been yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the rest of them, it, Happy to be corrected, but I think the rest of the items there are actually in the long-term plan. And what is the total cost of the Pākākūriki Surf Club? Um, you know, how long's a piece of string, but what's the general figure? I think how long's a piece of string is the operative thing. There are various ways the project could be staged. What this would enable them to do is keep operations going. So, yeah. So, yeah, so, so are we going to are we going to relitigate? This list is that what we want to do, just, or it's just a, an overall picture. It's something that councillor co brought up before. So, so we had a briefing on it um, about a did, year ago. I can't remember that figure. Do you, can you remember the figure for the cost of the? I think. If, okay. Yeah, that that's for the whole project though. It can be yeah. scaled, um, yeah, okay. so so that they can do ablutions and keep going as a club. Okay, thank you. Is that it, Sophie? 
Oh, hang on, Nigel first. Oh, okay. Sorry, Nigel. Yeah, uh, just a couple of questions. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to relitigate the that three. Um, I'm interested in the other two though. Um, so there's no there's no slide that says where the other two. So we got five point two six million, right? So that accounts for three point one eight five of it. So the other two. Um, is there a slide somewhere that says where that's going? And is any of that, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not suggesting that it's contestable, but it'd be interesting to know. I mean, there is some... Next slide, that, isn't it? Yeah, somewhere. No. No. Thank, no. Through you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. No, um, <coughs> the briefing just before, the, just before I think the briefing on the board in December had the OPEX um, projects. So um, the better or funding, so that the remainder of the funding actually relates to uh, council approved uh, OPEX projects uh, because our recommendation to you is to reassign the CAPEX, we did not include the OPEX. Okay. The, re the reason I raise that is that the, <coughs> the point of the better off funding, there is a point to it, was, well allegedly it's not just the slush fund, um, but the, t the two primary criteria that were pointed out was one is supporting communities to transition to a sustainable and low emissions economy, including by building resilience to climate change and natural hazards. And that was one of the fundamentals. Um, the second is delivery of infrastructure. Nigel, can I yeah. just stop you there? Yeah. Um, this, um, if, if we if we go into a deep dive discussion no, into the better dive. off funding, no. um, well, yeah. reading reading out the criteria is a little bit of a deep dive. Then we're not going to get to the end of this slide pack by yeah. twelve thirty. Well, it's only it's only one sentence. Uh, the second the criteria is a sentence. Okay. But these sentences have um, significant meaning to them. And the other one was really about enabling housing development and growth. So the question is like, so neither of those criteria figure in in here at all. So presumably they do figure quite strongly in the other two somewhere. And the when the, the 15 that we're working on the basis that the 15 that's coming, mm -hmm. are we going to be focusing on those criteria? Is there a requirement to focus on those criteria? Or can we just go, nah, to hell with it, let's build a rocket ship? Well, I think we can, I'll answer that. Well, I, th I think we can get... Um, some indication of that by the fact that this list has been approved by them already. So um, obviously it met the criteria enough for, for, for their purposes. Bede? Oh, sorry, thanks, sorry, Madam Chair. Oh, Cam. <laughs> Bede just looked so enthusiastic. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, so just a quick question, because what we're talking about with this slide here may be a moot point. If DIA don't agree to the variation. So have they given an indication that they'd be okay with that happening? They've, in, they've indicated that they that they would um, certainly consider a, a, a revised proposal, and other councils have, have already um, gone down that path. And so so they reiterated the criteria would have to, whatever it was we were proposing to reallocate the money to would have to meet the criteria. Um, but they they are expecting variations and are receiving them. Okay, so they will look at it, but they haven't given a guarantee. Yep. Yep. Okay, thank you. Just a quick clarification around that three waters depreciation uplift potentially being left unfunded. And if that gap was, if say we did have to plug that gap, if three waters doesn't go ahead, what would be our options for doing that? Like the CCO conversation that's kind of begun and might have a life in the next kind of few years or so, depending on the conversations of the table. Like, are, are options like that um, viable, and would they be in place quick enough to allow for that to potentially plug the gap? Or what are the other levers that we would have to plug that if it became an issue? Um, so, the 441 will simply increase the size of the non-funded depreciation pool. So, um, what we would, you know, We've been on a path for the last four or five years to just gradually, at an affordable level, close that gap. So um, the financial strategy for the long-term plan would have to, again, it would, it would include a um, debt repayment strategy. And so the option would be we'd have to look at, we'd have to look at how quickly could we, the strategy would be to 
claw that back and and you know you'd still want to fully fund depreciation because for every one dollar of depreciation that you're not funding from rates you're funding from borrowings um, so you just like we did with the um, actual water rates um, we did a, a gradual increase to the water rates we would have to start with would basically have to uh, remodel um, the, the glide path to to, to actually um, funding that from rates. The only option is to really fund it from rates. Or your other levers, which aren't tangible, you increase your fees and user charges, but you increase them to a point where no one uses the swimming pools. That doesn't put us in a great position either. So um, there would be modelling and it would form part of the financial strategy. Okay, next slide maybe. Or do you want to, you didn't want to steer on this yet? Or more to go on this? The rest of the or the next section of the of the presentation is around capex, um, so perhaps perhaps it's useful Let's to get, get a steer on Let's get through to this. the rest of you, the you capex, the and then okay. we'll come back to this. Um, right. So yeah, this is um, simply providing you with uh, an outline of the draft capex program for next year as it as it currently stands. So this was um, last revised, I guess, just before Christmas. Um, and what will happen over coming months is we'll just continue to revise this based on, um, you know, what's happening this year. There'll, there'll be, um, inevitably, there'll be movements between years and um, other factors that will need to be taken taken into account, including, um, obviously, any, any directions that, that you may provide as well. Um, so I mentioned earlier, total pro there's three slides. The totals are at the bottom of slide three. Um, we've just listed by activity, so um, uh, the activity areas, and just noted the significant projects, so you can get a flavour of what's in there, compared against the LTP, which is the centre cent centre column. So, um, in total, 88 million uh, is is the total figure, which compares against the LTP year three of 72. So on the face of it, 16 million higher, but as I mentioned earlier, you need to um, note that the IAF approvals, which are 9 million, are included in that $88 million figure. So um, if you adjust for that, it's 79 versus 72. And so that, that program, as I say, will just continue to be refined, um, and it'll, it'll come back to you um, through the remainder of the project for ultimately for approval of the process, beg your pardon. Questions? Nigel. Yeah, I'm, um, <coughs> I'm trying to find the Waikanae Library in here. Yeah, I know, but that, that was for the first year. There was, there was 900,000 in there um, for the first year, but um, so I can't find it in capital projects after that. Is this not an exhaustive, well, I presume this isn't an exhaustive list, but given that that's supposed to be a pretty significant one, I was just wondering where that is. So it is a, it is a complete list in the sense that it adds, adds through to the full 88, but you'll see in each um, activity area we've got others, just in the interest of, it's about 100 lines long, yeah. uh, but in the interest of compressing it down, we've, we've grouped... Um, so we've grouped. Uh, I think. I think we set a threshold at maybe a million dollars of spend. So um, for that reason, it's pro I suspect it's probably grouped into um, where are we? Into that yeah, community facilities other. Yeah. Um, but isn't, there's and there's a line item that says eight point six million in the twenty three twenty four year. Yeah, eight point six million. So I, I just can't. I can't see that in here. And it, that's that's quite a significant number. Where's the 8.6 million, Nigel? Page. Oh. Page 622 of the long-term planning. Oh, right. <laughs> Which you've all got in front of you, no doubt. That you all know of by heart. If you turn to, turn to page 862. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 622. So that's in this year's expenditure? <coughs> no, no, no. There's 900,000 as in... Yeah. This year. Well, I'm, what I'm asking you about is where is where are we in after that? So this this slide is just literally showing the spend for 23-24. I think I 
think in the long-term plan, that amount is in the following year. So we're, ju we're just literally showing your $88 million is your 23, 24 year. And anything anything um, above a million is, is detailed. Oh, okay. Whereas the long-term plan will set out the project cost over the years. The Waikanae Library um, spans into 23, 24 and 24, 25. Yeah. So I, think, I think it is a, a, an item of significant community interest though yeah. so yeah. Um, maybe there could be in future publications or any kind of communication we have around this a bullet point to say this is the expenditure for this year and the bulk of it will be in, in future years or something like that yeah look absolutely true madam chair look it, the slides today are just to show you um, what typically we asked is the 88 million dollar capex program for 23 24 we typically get asked what's in it so that slide has been designed to show you what are the big ticket items for next year. And the, the slide wasn't designed to give you an overall view of pro, big projects, the length of those projects and the total cost, but take the feedback. Any other questions? I've got a couple. Have you got any more? Yeah, just one. Uh, just a, an observation, really. One of the reasons, and I take Janet's point on this, is that he, you, know, you can have an item of a million dollars in this coming year and then if you look over the page there's there's nothing oh terrific right so it's kind of done and dusted in that period but if you look over the page and there's a really big scary number then that makes this number relevant you know so that's that's the mm. reason i'm sort of emphasizing that yeah, yeah. that is a that is a really good point and, and if i come back to when mark introduced what we were talking about today. This is about the long-term plan in year three of that plan, noting that year four, whilst as part of the 20-year the plan, will be relitigated as we progress into next year. Great, so, so we've got to the, kind of got to the end of, um, kind of got to the end of our CapEx program, but um, I'm aware that that we're approving kind of an increase in our debt levels with an increase in our capital program, or are we not? So, so it, it would be nice to have a steer. We, we've, we've come to you with some, with some options uh, and to, to, to challenge our thinking and to understand what the appetite looks like around the table for, for rates increases. Uh, noting that we're starting at 7.9 uh, in line with year three of that long-term plan. Uh, so really for us, uh, is what we've tabled palatable? Do you want us to go away and do some more work? Uh, we've, we've put some options there, especially looking at that better off funding, noting that it is just tranche one. Uh, and, and Ian explained really well the process for any future funding, and, and that's not to be considered uh, in today's environment. So really a, a steer as to um, what you'd like us to go away and do. So first of all, um, it'd be quite good to have a steer on whether we want to take the suggestion of um, releasing our CapEx funding from the Better Off funding, um, in, uh, putting that in our CapEx projects and reapplying to pay for some OPEX projects to reduce rates. What are people's thoughts around that? And anybody, please put your microphone on if you want to talk about that right now. You want to talk about that? Um, I'll go Kim first. Kia ora. Um, yes, I, I actually had a question before that, but um, to that question that you just raised, um, I, I'm supportive of... A, rates release for ratepayers. That's what I am supportive of. I'm just a bit weary of the robbing Peter to pay Paul, I suppose you could say, um, and how effective that would be given that the three waters is in a bit of a mm. in a bit of a pause state and we don't know what's going on with that. But I, I definitely agree that um, you know, anything we can do to reduce rates um, is a good thing. And so I would likely say yes to this, but it's, there are those concerns about 
my concern is will it have the desired effect it will in the immediate um, but long term are we just setting ourselves up for another headache and um, could I ask the question that I wanted to ask at sure. the end of the yep. yeah it was just around um, someone mentioned I'm not too sure who it was about the fact that the 88 million capex projects that we have on the books now are unlikely to be completed um, within the year was there a dollar value around which would likely to be completed and which weren't I wasn't sure if I caught that Through, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, no, no, um, we can't. We can't say with certainty of the eighty-eight million dollars what what we what would be unlikely to to to, um, to deliver. Uh, it, you know, just just based on the the current uh, environment that we in. You know, there's still supply constraints and re and resource constraints, and and I suspect now that you know uh, resources will be um, reprioritised up north. So, um, but but generally speaking. Um, what we do is we hold the budget. So um, you know, if we were in a position where we uh, we did, you know, things went down in cost, where um, the borders were open, we had lots of um, you know lots of suppliers were able to deliver. Then we, then we would certainly you know if we approve eighty eight million dollars, we would try, certainly try and do it. But we you know so we're holding the budget, but we don't believe that we'll be able to to deliver on that. So uh, what we have is we have a carryover process whereby we then carry that over to next year. But at the moment, we aren't in a position to say with certainty of the 88 what we wouldn't be able to deliver, but it's, it's unlikely we will deliver the whole amount. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I would be, because um, any in the environment, you're right, in the environment that we are right now, um, relief is, is very much high a high priority for people. Yeah. Um, and if we can, we're not guarantee, if we're under the understanding that these projects are going to go ahead anyway they may just be deferred um i would think that that would be acceptable but i, I do fear around the uncertainty especially around that tranche two three waters funding and i agree with councillor co and that this does not address the actual higher issue that needs addressing alongside this it's, it's a stop gap and that's all it is thank you uh jocelyn yeah, thank you. So I've um, been wanting to ask this question for a little while. So in relation to the capital items, um, there are a number of items that are listed under the capital projects list. And um, I think um, Ian mentioned, or maybe Mark mentioned, that they don't amount to a lot of money individually. But when I've added it up, that's, that's, when you actually add them all up, it comes to $4.7 million. And I think it's important for us to understand um, what those projects are, whether they're new projects, um, whether that's an increase in price of those projects. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, we're going to be signing this off, and um, we need to know what we're signing off. And plus, there's also a reduction in the corporate by a million dollars as well. So I, I personally think it would be helpful to have. A, a good understanding about what is meant by those individual other projects. It probably can't be provided now, but I think it would be useful for everyone. Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair. We could um, bring that detail to Public Workshop number two. That sounds great. Thank yeah, you. And I completely agree. Martin. Um, through you, Madam Chair. Um, just clarifying, this is the first step in this process. You know, this is our first um, workshop. Um, so, personally, in my opinion, um, our rates increase needs to go lower than this. Um, so I just want to, I'm putting that out there right now. But I support what's being uh, discussed here today. Appreciate it. it could be a gap fill, whatever. But from my opinion, where local government's going so up in the air um, that um, there's going to be a lot of change over the next few years regardless. Uh, and, uh, and that includes how, um, how meeting our objectives for our community is funded. Um, I do have questions around that um, capital program, um, but I don't think this is a forum to uh, discuss that, uh, but I would be interested in perhaps we can have another workshop on that or something like that, I don't know. Um, but I do appreciate the difficulty in getting that rates amount lower, but I do think we have to go lower than that. That's my thoughts. Thank you. Thanks. So, so I hear you about um, having a further discussion about the capital program. I think that's a good idea. 
Um, I think with that extra detail in there too, um, maybe we could allocate um, extra time towards that in the next workshop so that we can get get our heads around that. Um, do you have any further comment around that, Mark or Ian? Through you, Madam Chair. Look, I think what would be helpful is um, we'll action what's just been said. Um, what would be helpful in advance of that? So what we'll be bringing back is the as a more as the as the detail. Um, so it'll be those numbers split out. If you've got some major concerns, what would, be ha what would be helpful for us is if you just email those through in advance so that we can provide the detail and look into some of those questions in advance of workshop too. Yeah, and, and CC all the other councillors in as well, if that's okay, so we all know what the concerns are. I'm going to go keep with Martin until he's finished his line of questioning. I was going to finish there, but there's just one one thing I just, I am struggling to get my head around with that um, that, cap that capital table um, is, for what I can see there is one side balances the other side out. Yet there's a lot of movement uh, between the two, ups and downs and all that sort of scenario. Mm -hmm. So point in case is we've got, we allowed $3 million in the um, Waikanae Cemetery land purchase, okay? Uh, that's been budgeted for, but we're not gonna spend it. Okay, so that balances it one way. But I'm assuming we still, we wouldn't have budgeted for that if we didn't need to purchase that land. Uh, or so, you know, we're deferring that as such. Um, so, uh, although it's a deferred spend, it's not taken out of the c equation completely. So, to me, that distorts um, because that that's, that happens on quite a few of those lines as such. So, okay, we're going to have to do that purchase further on down the track, but we allowed for it here. The money's not following necessarily that purchase. So, three, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Sean, I, I think, has an answer to that. Yeah, yep. so that's a good example. So what you're seeing there, I guess, is the result of the last five months' worth of work, four months' worth of work in terms of re-forecasting and reprogramming the Capital Works Program. So exactly what you've seen. So you don't see the year out or the, the other years because it's where work is either not able to be delivered in that period of time or there's an issue as to why it's extended into the next year. Waikanae Cemetery is a good one where, in terms of the process to procure that land, we don't believe that that is um, achievable in the next 12 to 18 months. So we've moved it out, but the money is still there in terms of the actual project itself. So we can't take things out of the LTP. We have to we have to remain within the LTP envelope, I guess, in terms of the projects. But what this reflects is issues with either timing, delivery, cost escalations, uh, or, or other is issues with regard to those capital projects. So the opposite of that would be there's been potentially money come from previous years that have transferred into this budget. Would that be a sort of, so in other words, this is a slice of either side and it all comes together in a larger picture. No real money there. <laughs> Who's next? Liz. <laughs> you must have pressed your button and then pressed it again. Sorry, <laughs> Nigel. Uh, look, I, I support uh, the use of the better off funding as a short-term measure. Uh, there is a huge pressure on particularly the retired sector of our population who will now be facing massive insurance increases as well as rates increases and in some cases people are spending you know, a massive percentage of their pension income on those two things, rates and insurance. And we know that statistically there's a high percentage of retirees still have mortgages, so they've got interest rate increases on top of that. Something like probably uh, somewhere between 10 and 20% of retirees still have a mortgage. So we, we have to do something to help out these people because they're going without the necessities of life, I think, in some cases, to mm. get by. This, we cannot be business as usual. We have to demonstrate to the public that we are leaving no stone unturned in terms of focusing on our OPEX. To me, CAPEX is probably, in the overall scheme of things, neither here nor there, because as you say, CAPEX has a minimal impact on rates. What does have an impact, impact is OPEX, and within that, as Councillor Kirby pointed out earlier, Staffing costs are a major component. 
and, and we need to get an idea of, you know, if we're switching better off funding over to off the extent of projects, to what extent are they contained just within this financial year? Uh, what, what is the ongoing impact next year so that we don't have the same problem next year? Are we really taking a good hard look at our staffing levels and can we honestly go out to the public and say we have, we have really fine-tuned things so that we are operating at the minimum level of staffing required to deliver the necess necessary services to our community? I'm not sure that I can honestly, hand on heart, go to the public and say that we're in that situation. And at, uh, at our earlier briefing, I did talk about things like having a cap on recruitment of new staff, particularly where there we were looking at positions that are not frontline service delivery type positions. You know, I think we need to do a lot more work in this area to um, really hand on heart say to the public we have done everything within our power to cut back on our OPEX so that although, so that we're not going to be in danger of having the same shortfall problem next year. So I think a session around that, around staffing levels, I don't even know how many staff we employ, to be honest, and what the growth uh, traje trajectory has been in our staffing levels, uh, and whether there is room to cut back on some kind of non-essential projects or whatever. Because, you know, when you've got people going without the necessities of life, uh, while, you know, some things become nice to have, and I just think we, we have to... Um, bite the bullet and say, well, actually, you know, we're, we're taking it, you know, tightening our belt a couple of notches. Um, I wouldn't like to see people being made redundant, but surely there is some room to move in terms of the, you know, the turnover and, and reviewing, you know, whether we can put some positions on hold in terms of filling them. Even putting them on hold for six months or so may make, it may have a, an impact on our bottom line. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. It's a, that's, a, that's a point that comes up pretty much every annual plan is staffing levels <coughs> because it's such a big expense within our organisation. Um, you said some key words there, which is non-essential projects, and there's one key in the key word in there, which is projects. We can decide on work streams. We can decide on projects. We can decide on what we want to deliver as an organisation. But in terms of how that's delivered and what staff are required, that to me is actually beyond our power to control because we only employ one person mm. and that's the chief executive. Yes. But we can certainly give that message, which you very strongly and eloquently did just now to staff, that that's what we want to see happen in the yes, organisation. Yes, I, I, it's a request of the CEO to come back with um, an answer to that question. I, yes, I'm not suggesting at all that we be responsible for making decisions around staffing levels, uh, but just uh, for us to have comfort that... Um, this area has been looked at and intensively. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, to reduce staffing levels, we would need to reduce the projects that uh, we're doing yeah, operationally. I'm not necessarily saying reducing staffing yeah. levels, but... What or even to cap about? them or even to make sure that we're being... It's up to us to decide what we wouldn't do. That's I don't right. think it's up to us to question whether the organisation is doing things efficiently in terms of what we want right. to do. We need to trust right. that they are. But we need we some, would need to reduce uh, our activities in order to do that. That's right. But we, I think it's a discussion we need to have with the yeah. CEO around, um, you know, the, the right balance there, you know, and, and whether, whether we've got things, you know, balanced correctly. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Do you want to add anything, Darren? Thank you. Good question. It's always a struggle. Uh, especially when we have rising costs, competing priorities. We, we are currently funded in, and we report regularly in both long-term plan, annual plan and our, and our financial reports as to what the current state of play looks like. There actually has been real issues with recruitment here. Um, and if I, if, I, if I look at what happens in, in some other local bodies, I, I think some of the challenge for us is that we are so close to Wellington where the cost of employment and, and what is on offer for similar type roles is a lot higher than what local government can actually fund. So, so something that I've, I've recognised coming here is that actually we have people leaving us to go and work in central government to continue to work from Kapiti and be paid an extra $20,000, $30,000, $40,000. 
Mm. So for us to be able to retain good staff is a real challenge. Yeah, uh, and so yeah, sitting on yeah. the books at the moment is, is a considerable number of vacancies. And so a challenge for us has been to come up with what does a retention strategy look like to be able to retain mm -hmm. those really good people. And then when we're in inflationary times uh, and, and the Reserve Bank makes, makes comments in relation to what an unemployment rate looks like and perhaps where it should be going, uh, again, that's, that's really unsettling for a number of people who live in smaller communities um, and need to be able to provide. I'm, I'm more than happy to have the discussion to make sure that we are fit for purpose um, and that we are agile enough to be able to pivot when and if we need to. And so that, that is definitely something that we can look at. Thank you. Thanks for that answer, Darren. Certainly an ongoing conversation. <coughs> Good point. Um, <coughs> Nigel? Yep. <coughs> Sorry, just following on from what Liz was saying and um, Lawrence's query, I'd, it, I'd be interested to see um, some of those numbers. Given that the, the inflation that's included in the draft um, annual plan, about 60% of that is staff cost. So I'm kind of in, I'm interested in um, how much you know, what percentage of our, uh, is, relates to consultants and, and external legal opinions and um, how much of that gets, is being used because if you were going to apply the knife that would be a place to start. The, um, <coughs> yes to the applying of the better off funding. I'm taking it now that, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you're asking for a steer now about embedding that 7.9. You're not talking about going away. And is, so is that the, is that kind of like the baseline number now? I'll come back to my... Sorry, Madam Chair. No, I think <coughs> what we're asking for right now is a steer on your levels of comfort with options one and two. We've heard that you want us to all look at staff costs and we've heard that you want to look at the capital works program in detail so for today it's we have put two options on the table to at least get us to 8.1 mm. and what is your level of comfort uh, around that and as the chief executive said are there any other areas that you want to us to consider and we have heard the comments on staff costs that that needs to come back to the table okay and my second point was um, <coughs> there's a question is there any um, is there any deferred maintenance going on? Um, and is that a consideration in any of this? If it is, that's a significant concern. And quite often that gets hidden. Deferred maintenance gets hidden. You don't see it. Um, and even though, as you've said, it's unlikely that we'll be delivering um, on this, but I'm assuming that you still have to rate for it. So... You know, there's speculation about whether or not we'll be able to dig all the ditches and, you know, um, but supply issues, whatever. But we still have to rate for it, presumably, on the basis that we can dig every ditch, you know, the sky opens and it's all good. Um, so is that the case or are, uh, are you going to build in some sort of speculative punt about what percentage might not get done? Um, given the reality that, you know, given and also what's been happening in Auckland and the Bay of Plenty, I mean, good luck finding jib board again for the next two years. Um, so given that reality, should we be checking that now? Should we be factoring in that now? And I, I it doesn't need an answer right now, but I think that's a consideration. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Nigel. Who's next? Lawrence. I think it's me. Uh, Sean's got his hand up. Oh, sorry, Sean. Did you want to say something about that? Sorry, I can't see your light from here. And I'm not very good at looking at my screen. I'm sorry, Sean. <laughs> Well, <laughs> hold your breath. <laughs> Thank you. I was just going to say that there was, 
definitely uh, from a, there is no deferred maintenance. We don't defer maintenance. We um, we certainly get on and do things. Uh, the other uh, question there about delivery. The generally, I guess. Uh, so on a, on a good year, we generally deliver around 80 to 85 percent of the capital works program. So that That's is um, sort of where we we're, we're looking at in terms of what element of the total 88 that we're likely to deliver. The other thing that goes into that has gone into those changes that you see up there is that conversation about deliverability and resourcing. Uh, a lot of that stuff is already sort of linked to contracts that we have in place at the moment, but there is definitely a deliverability uh, lens that's been put over it to get to that end number. And in terms of rating for the full amount, I might leave that to Mark to comment on in terms of that. Yeah, I think Nigel just pointed it out correctly that you just rate for the full amount. Is there anything you'd have to add? I just note that the, as we've talked about earlier, the the impact on the rating. If you're looking at the capex program, the impact on next year's rates is not massive because of the delay. So, so yes, there's an impact on funding. Yes, there might be a small depreciation effect, but it's actually thereafter. So, um, yeah, you, it, 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 you could you could take a third out of that program, and it wouldn't massively reduce. I don't think the rates impact next year. It's that whole timing. Um, I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned. So option two, I don't think option one looks like a good option, considering the Hawke's Bay and the three waters on hold, etc. Um, but I'm just concerned that essentially, from my read of it, is option two is just some accounting trickery. I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. It's an accounting method of moving the stuff around. And perhaps that doesn't focus us on the fundamentals of what's driving the rates increase or the ability to reduce rates, even at a, a micro level, 1%, say. So if we just go, yep, that's good, we'll do some accounting, happy days, on we go. I'm just wondering if we should be focusing on the fundamentals of business, which is we've got debt, we've got a works program, and we've got income that doesn't support that. So I'd, I'd like to see a combo, personally, of having a really good hard look at, the, at that works program. There's some stuff there that perhaps will uh, impact our OPEX in two or three years, which is a big concern. Okay, we're in the annual plan now, but say if we build a library that employs 20 people, just for a figure, five people, um, we've got the the CapEx funding now for that library or next year, but in four years' time we're going to have a ballooning in OPEX. So I think there's some, when we're looking at those capital, um, that, that capital program, I think it really needs to be looking down the track I think as, that's as a well. really good point because there's also maintenance, yeah. which is OPEX as well. Yeah. Um, Mark, did you want to answer the first part of that? Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, look, thank you, Councillor Cooper. It was actually the other way around, really. The, the first option one's really accounting trickery. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I say that lightheartedly. Oh, I, I, look, um, I mean, it, it, it's, accounting, it's accounting trickery uh, in the sense that we, we, we make the deliberate decision to... Um, to not fund through rates 441,000, you know, knowing full well that there may be an issue going forward. If the Three Waters Reform Program is cancelled, then we have a gap. But we are deliberately making the, um, the, the decision which results in an accounting entry to effectively take $441,000 off our rates revenue requirement. So, so that is an accounting trickery. The second one is just, look, it's completely different. We are saying that there's $3.1 million that the government has said they will give us, and we need to go away with your blessing. We need to go away and we need to identify um, projects that we're doing, that we're planning to do, that we're right now saying rates will fund that, notwithstanding everything else you're saying. So, I, you know, I think, I, you know, Takutai Kapiti is one of the projects that has been... Has been um, mentioned earlier as an example. So that is a project that it's an operational project, it's 100% rates funded. There is an opportunity to use some of that $3.1 million to do that. So that project will, will happen, and right now it's being funded by rates. 
Um, of course. So we we if you if you say you're comfortable with option two, we we have to go away. We have to look at those operational projects and then bring that back to the table. We have to speak with our equity partners. So there's quite a bit of work to still be done to actually identify those things. But there's three point one million dollars of rates funding that you have the opportunity to actually kick for touch. Um, those capital projects will still be done. They should just be absorbed in the $88 million CapEx program because we won't deliver $88 million of CapEx. Um, and we have heard that um, the chief executive has been asked to have a look at our staffing levels and whether or not there's options there. So we need to bring that back to the table. So, um, But your follow through point is through, through looking at the projects, the operational projects, yes, there may be the opportunities. And, and again, I reiterate everything that you've said. A lot of those opportunities will present itself for you when you start to develop the next long-term plan. Levels of service come at a cost, and that's why we had the financial strategy um, slide up, the three levers. Um, if you want rates down and you want debt down, then your capital works program goes down. If you want capex down and rates down, then your debt's going to go up. So that's why it's so... That's why it's a brilliant piece of work, that financial strategy, because it guides everything we do. It really does. If you want everything down, your levels of service, that size of that triangle has to shrink. But you get to do that as you develop the long-term plan. Lawrence. Um, I'm, uh, I'll just put my support in for the, uh, the reduction of rates, getting that increase down. Um, as low as we possibly can and uh, so repurposing some of the better off funding I'm keen for that not so keen on option one I just think there's too many unknowns around three waters at the moment for us to put that whole potential hole in our budget um, at a 0.5 percent and I balance that with what I just said about getting rates as low as we can um, got to use some wisdom around that as well I think so those are just just my couple of points yeah, so it would be a, a long-term hole in the budget in terms of our <coughs> financial strategy rather than not spending now, wouldn't it? Could you want to explain, number one, just a little bit more, maybe? Uh, option three, Madam Chair, just explain option number one a bit more. Yeah. Um, so the annual plan provides for, obviously, depreciation of our three waters, so it's our stormwater, wastewater, and water water network and, and as we've heard from Ian um, with the with the capital works that we're doing this year plus the impacts of revaluation it has increased the total depreciation on those three water on the three waters assets by an additional 441,000 over and above what we've actually got in the long-term plan largely driven by um, well driven by um, costs of construction which have gone up and then the costs of replacement through the revaluation which has gone up so what we're saying is you've still got you've still got about nine million dollars worth of depreciation in the annual plan for the three waters network, and that is effectively funding the renewal and the maintenance of, of the three waters. What we're saying is is just that uplift, the four forty one, which is spread across three of the networks, the four forty one. Let's not put that burden on the ratepayers, given that those assets are being transferred. Um, as Ian said, we, you know, we, we came to you just before Christmas. We did quite a deep dive in the economy, but with everything that's happening, we, you know, even the economists are a bit unsure of what's happening. But what we do suspect is we suspect we, we know the OCR is not forecast to go as high as it will, and we th and we know that the longer term projection of rates are coming down. So, what Ian has said is that that translates into everything. It translates if inflation comes down, it translates into everything. The cost of construction comes down. The, our revaluation, the total cost of replacement comes down. That 441 comes down. So um, in the passage of time, that 441 could actually disappear. But we've been charging our ratepayers for that. So, so on balance, we actually feel that the the benefit uh, to the ratepayer far outweighs the risk of not funding that 441 with long-term interest rates coming down. Um, I mean, economists are now starting to say, well, you know, um, it's not as bad as what they thought. So, but take, it, it is a risk. It absolutely is a risk. But we know that 
This council will not not do the maintenance because we haven't funded 441,000. We do want to transfer our assets in ship shape condition. That's always been our, our, our focus. Um, and the better our assets are that we transfer, the hopefully the better this community is placed. So, um, yeah, we've put it on the table because we think it's, a, it's actually a prudent thing to do. But again, these are options for you to give us a steer on. Thank you. Sophie? Yeah, I kind of had a similar concern to Lawrence around that option one, and also just what we've what we've seen with kind of the more water that we've been having to live with over the last few weeks as a as a nation. It kind of um, yeah, there's a real concern around that maintenance just obviously continuing continuing to be done, which it sounds like there's assurance that it would be anyway, despite the uplift of that um, four hundred forty one thousand. My other concern is around the fact that obviously the proposal or the options that we have in front of us wouldn't trigger the significance and engagement policy as they are, but if we were to investigate that number coming down further and potentially that conversation around staffing costs, would that then mean consultation and what would be the time frame around that and the resource to deliver that consultation or would it not trigger it? <laughs> I just don't know, like, are we are we potentially going down a completely different route if we try and put a whole bunch of time and energy into reducing the number even more? Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Look, um, yeah, if I take a step back, so, so first of all, look, I might not have the numbers right, but there's about $9 million worth of, of rates funding that is maintaining our three waters network we're talking about 441 that really in the grand scheme of things is neither here nor there if we had a major natural disaster here we've got insurance and there's a whole lot of other levers that we've got um, available to us to um, to get us through so um, the staffing costs um, we've heard you've heard from the chief executive that we are holding a number of vacancies recruitment is challenging um, we'll take you through that. Uh, we aren't fat in terms of our operating spend. Uh, for those of you who have been around the table a long time, you know that we've got the third lowest operating costs in the country. On one side it's good, on one side it's fat. So, um, and this does come up, you know, this comes up every year. So, uh, um, yes, you want to see that information and we'll show you that information. Um, there's, there's, not, there's not a lot there. Um, if you start to drastically change levels of service by what I've heard from the table is not staff cuts but looking at potentially um, postponing recruitment of certain roles for six months um, embedded in our annual plan number is 1.3 million dollars uh, because we know it takes on average three months to um, recruit staff in terms of the in terms of the cycle so our um, our FTE positions are not budgeted hundred percent because we know this staff churn um, we, we've seen it. There's a draw of staff. Staff are being drawn to Wellington because it's a much more buoyant employment market. So, um, but nevertheless, you've asked to see that information and there's been a commitment to bring that. So we will do that. If you start to change levels of service drastically by staff cuts, yes, that's consultation. Mm -hmm. But we still don't anticipate that we have um, got anything yet that will trigger. Um, if you do decide to um, consult we really need to know that sooner rather than later mm -hmm. because it does absorb incredible resource. You've got a you've got a consultation document for a start that you have to you have to produce. It's not audited, but you you you've got to be very clear. What are you consulting the community on? So you're giving the community the um, the power to make yes no decisions, and it's a longer process. So it's it's got to be a document. It's got to be very clear. It's got to be very clear. What are the rates impacts if you do it? What are the rate for impacts if you don't? That's mm. quite different to an information campaign, which just explains why we're doing what okay. we're doing. So um, okay. we're prepared for consultation and we're prepared for an information campaign. Um, but we, what we certainly don't want is we don't want to get to uh, workshop three and you swing from, we're all good, it's an information campaign mm. to consultation, because then we are in trouble, because we must adopt the annual yeah. plan mm. by, um, by 30 June. You can defer setting your rates, but you can't defer adopting your annual plan. Then we're in trouble. Thank you. Is that you, Sophie? Good. Very, very good question. Uh, Richard? Uh, I'd just like to make the point that um, Three Waters 
is bound to be a political decision at central government level very soon. Um, and I think at the moment we leave it in. And if we have to drop it out because things change, then we'll drop it out. But at the moment, I think it's a good idea just to work with, with, uh, with the suggested um, option. That sounds like a pragmatic approach. So um, in terms of dropping it um, further, we've heard that um, significant changes in levels of service will require consultation. I know that um, Hora Whenua are doing an amendment to their LTP, which is similar. They started that um, halfway through last year, before the elections. So um, that uh, embarking on that right now would be would be pretty much actually, well, if not impossible, then extremely difficult and would waste more ratepayers' money, which would increase <laughs> the rates for next year. So um, I think we want to avoid that. I think that's what we've heard. Um, we're going to be having another look at the CapEx program, but bearing in mind that that's not going to affect the rates. That's just for our own information to know what's, what's going on, a good opportunity to do that. Um, I think I've heard general support for these two measures to bring the rates down to that level at least. I think there's a level of acceptance that the drivers we've been shown for the increase in rates are pretty immovable and to do anything more would require potentially le changes in levels of service but I've also heard that staff are going to have a, a wee scan to see what else, well a, an, another look to see what else we might be able to do so that as Liz said we've left no stone unturned. Um, so is, does that pretty much summarise things and is that all you need from us today? Thank you Madam Chair, yes. Um, that's, that's brilliant. Um, I've also heard a, um, a, a, a request to come back by way of another workshop, uh, not necessarily part of the annual plan workshops but a session on, on really deep dive into the significance engagement policy yep. and the financial strategy. Fantastic. Um, based on that, I think there's only two slides left to, to take you through. Uh, so just, thank you for the steer. Just got Nigel. Just a, um, just a quick point of clarification then. So um, at the top of the show, I mentioned the like a shadow budget um, with you know three waters fully in, fully out. Um, the, I'm getting a steer that that's not really where you want to go. I'm just wondering, is is that to do that, to overlay that, is that a, a computer program push a couple of buttons or is it a huge resource required to do it? That's a long-term plan discussion, I think, rather than an annual plan one. I mean, we'll mm. still be delivering. Would I be right about that? Yeah, uh, through you, Madam Chair, yes. I think just in terms of point of clarification, so... Um, this annual plan must include the three waters, so it will, because the three waters goes one July 24, so um, so we'll have that. Um, we probably, as a senior leadership team, need to actually just regroup, because two days ago we thought that we almost had to prepare two LTPs, one with it in, one with it not, you know, not knowing where central government was going to go. But I think some legislation in the last couple of days has been passed which says that the long-term plan, our next long-term plan, must exclude water. So I think we need to regroup because some information has come out. So as an SLT, we just need to be sure and then we can provide you an update when we're certain. But um, it's, 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 it's looking like the next LTP doesn't have the three waters at all. Yeah. And so just, um, just to follow up to that, so um, given that there will be TAs comparable to ourselves, yeah. Um, who are going to run a parallel process, who are going to do basically two plans, because I think you mentioned a couple, I don't know if Poirier is one of them. Yep. Um, but if they are, perhaps there's, um, there's some real value for us to be able to sit on their shoulder and have a, just have a look, see. Through you, Madam Chair. Look, I absolutely take the point. I think we just need to take that offline, and um, there's 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 pros and cons. So I think if we if we regroup on that and then have a discussion later, I think it's I think it's a very good point that you've raised. Yeah. But it seems to be a moving target. Yeah. Um, just preparing one LTP is, is hard enough, never mind two. But um, we just need to regroup on what our position is and then come to the table. 
um, just very quickly, I know I know it's ten to one. So um, we've we've really we've actually really talked through slide thirty. Um, we've we've got a great steer from yourselves that you're open to option two. So um, option two to reprioritise and reallocate the better off funding. We do need to work with our iwi partners, and we will work with our iwi partners. So when we bring the options to the table, it will have already been in through after discussion with them. We aren't seeing anything here um, that has actually triggered the entire set of our significance and engagement policy. So um, as long as we continue to trend in this direction, it'll be an information campaign. And the intention is at the next workshop to bring you the details of what that information campaign is. It'll look very similar to what we did last year. We um, put out a whole lot of information, what our annual plan is going to be, what we were doing, what we were not doing and why. Um, Fees and charges update, so um, this is very, very quick. So this is one of our levers. If you want to reduce rates, you increase your fees and charges, but it comes with risks. Um, typically, we always inflate fees and charges by LGCI, which is 4.2%, um, but there's always exceptions. So um, exceptions could be where we, are, where we looked at our charging system and we want, to make, we want to make changes over and above 4.2% because we've looked at where we sit relative to others, or there's been legislative changes, or we're simplifying. Um, our fees and charges schedule is very, very long, so sometimes we consolidate. So this is just a heads up that um, the, the majority of our fees and charges are going up 4.2%. It's being depicted by the Local Government Cost Index, but there are a number of fees and charges that will be different to that, and the next workshop will take you through that. Um, Council always adopts the fees and charges in May, so that they are actually live and active because we, um, we then uh, we use that for our dog registrations. So effectively you adopt your new dog registration, which is, um, I think it's, I, th can't, I don't know exactly, but I think it's due on, on or before the 31st of July. So we, we make sure that you adopt that fee early so that we give members of the community plenty of notice to actually pay an increased fee. Um, and then most importantly, what's next? So workshop two is the 2nd of March. Um, and we, we've got a clear steer today, so we will be coming back with, um, with updates to options one and two. Um, we will also prepare um, the schedule of those other two briefings. We'll be bringing back CapEx details and we'll bring back, back staff details. We have in the program workshop number three on the 16th of March. It's, um, we've got if required. Um, so as I said, um, Hopefully we can get through workshop two um, by the 2nd of March because there is a lot of work that has to be done behind the scenes. Um, anyway, number three, um, we, we are planning to inform the community in um, April, for the whole month of April. We'll come back to you in the middle of May with, um, with, with uh, any responses that we've had. And like we always do, things do continue to change. So we'll, you know, mid-May we'll be sitting with you, we'll be presenting, have, has anything changed to the budgets? Um, Number five, we adopt the fees and charges on the 25th of May, and then um, the plan at the moment is to adopt the annual plan and then set the rates after that on the 20th of, in the 29th of June. We've got we've got to be confirmed uh, on the slide deck because we may or may not need to just bring that council meeting forward a week um, because of um, just logistic issues with the rates team of setting the rates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's just something that we're looking at. So thank you very much for your time. Happy to take any more questions, but that's what lies ahead of us. Yep. I have, a quick I have a quick question. How much, what's the income from fees and charges at the moment? It's about, it's approximately about $9 million. Right. And of those, um, oh, and, and like you said, there's a list of, as long as your arm, right? Is the, that $9 million, that the assumption of a, 4.2% increase in that. Um, this is about another four hundred thousand dollars. So is that is that assumption built in yep. to the current budget? Yes, it is. Right. So yep. if we decided to say not charge people for sports grounds, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> um, then it, it would be it would be it would have to be an addition to the rate line as yes. currently proposed. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes, that's cool. I think you'll find that quite a lot of um, groups and particularly children get free um, sports sports fields anyway. 
contentious. But let's not talk about that right now. No. Let's talk about that at the next workshop. I'll leave it for then. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about specific fees and charges right now. I think we've got, we're going to do that on the 2nd of March. We'll, yes. have, we'll have a look at those. I would like to talk about the fact that the, your first dog tag replacement costs $6.50, but after that you're shafted for $13 for one of those tags. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for a really great discussion today, and thanks for some really, really great questions and, I, and a clear steer at the end of today. It's been a really, really good session and a good start. Um, so um, we'll look forward to the next session, and we'll start again at 1.45. I think we need a decent break because we've got a long session this afternoon as well, and um, the staff might not be back till then anyway. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Ian. Oh, could, could I ask councillors please to remove any personal belongings so that the tables can be shifted around?